everybody. Welcome to On Friendship Podcast. And this is where we look at a Hallmark or Hallmark like movie uh, from the perspective of friendship and other relationships. And it's a lot of fun. I am film critic Rachel Wagner and friendship, friendship expert Elisa Lucas is here. Hello. I'm yes. excited. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's the end of the semester. Yay. So I'm feeling good. Grades are in, <laughs> summer begins. Things well, are looking up. <laughs> that's why I mean, I thought, oh, she's going to love this movie because it's <laughs> about a college professor or yeah, someone I, trying to become a professor. Adjunct instructor, which is a yes. terrible system. There was a little, <laughs> maybe some PTSD, maybe a little like, oh, you know, but yeah, I, I did appreciate this movie because yeah. I am a professor. So, <laughs> well, we we're talking about the presence of love and this came out last year and if people listen mm. to my best of hallmark non-christmas ranking last uh, for 2022 this was very high up on my list mm. i think it was number two i believe Ooh. yes and i think this movie was very strong and it kind of went under the radar i mm. feel like mm-hmm. People weren't really talking about it that much. And then it just sort of grew and people started talking about it more and more until uh, when we finally did our end of the year list, there were a lot of people saying this was the best thing the Hallmark made last year or certainly one of the best. And I think definitely one of the most underrated. I think that this could pretty easily be like a feature film release. I think it's really well made, really well acted. Uh, I think it's, it's very, it's a very high quality Hallmark movie. Nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And so I was already mm-hmm. thinking about my rankings for next year, like at the end of yes. the year. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder where this will fall. Will this be at the top? Yeah. Yes. We I mean, the, see. <laughs> the little summary is Professor Joss, who travels to England to visit the farm where her late mother grew up and bonds with single father Daniel, whose family now runs it. Mm -hmm. so yeah so overall like we already said a little bit but what did you think overall of the of the movie yes can I first say though so Rachel texted me the preview of the movie to be Uh like how about this one and I watched it right and I texted you back and I was like does he ever take his hat off because he's wearing the hat the whole time so I have to say when I saw the preview I did not have high hopes (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I'm up for anything. So you send me something, you want to watch it, I'll watch it. Like there's, you know, no qualms there. I mean, um, are you anti-hat in general? Well, was no, the, it just the hat felt barrier? like it was, because it was in England, it was going to be his personality. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it, just, it just felt like, hey, he's he's English, you know, we have to have this hat. And and you do have to say, there was a lot of plaid in this movie for the English folks. And it's true. And, and we saw some more flat at the end which I don't want to spoil yet but um overall so at first I was like I'm concerned right it's true I mean the wardrobe (laughs) is very like L.L. Bean yeah I was I was a little concerned but I have to say I really enjoyed this movie and I feel like I could have enjoyed this movie without the romance like Mm -hmm. as it's you know like I could do with not that I could do without it. That was fine. I just liked all the other stories that were happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I liked the side stories, the one with her mother, the one with, uh, Daniel's little girl, Tegan, you know, I was all about it. So, um, I enjoyed it. And then the romance was sort of like a cherry on top, if you will. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can see that. I, I did message you, uh, (laughs) and I said, this is from the, this is on the drama network on the movies and <laughs> mysteries, but I'm like, don't worry. Nobody dies. <laughs> At first, I when guess I her saw mother, the preview, the very I was like, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> None of our main characters. Die. <laughs> yeah. Her mother has passed away, which is a little different than yeah. what might happen in a murder mystery. <laughs> right. Uh, and I, I can see what you're saying about the romance. I do think they have like a lovely chemistry though, that really yeah. builds nicely through the, through the story. And you really feel like, boy, he needs her bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I just <laughs> felt like uh, my point with saying that though, is just that the other stories, storylines yeah. in the movie were strong as well. And so, yeah. you know, I was invested. I wanted to see what she'd find out about her mother or Mm -hmm. that storyline. I was interested in seeing what was going to happen with Tegan, the daughter. 
So I like I yeah. was invested. And then on top of that, you know, you have this English guy with his little hat, which the first scene he t- where he wasn't wearing it, I was like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please don't be cheesy English. Like, oh, we're in England. We have to do all these things to let you know we're in England. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I will talk about it more, but I love the whole scene when he when she goes with him to to Tegan's uh teacher conference thing. Yeah. And uh, you can just feel that he like needs that support so yes. much and just needs her so much it was so sweet and yeah uh, and you know this is a fast relationship and that can be challenging for some viewers but mm-hmm. I bought it I bought that that there was that immediate kind of chemistry and attraction I felt the chemistry for yeah. sure and also you know when things happen so she steps off the sidewalk and is almost hit by a car because she looks the wrong way Mm -hmm. um and he's he stops her from getting hit like I also believe that that's going to heighten the chemistry you know that sort of like hey we've experienced this thing together or like you saved my life yeah (laughs) (laughs) it has the very Keanu Reeves Sandra Bullock speed vibes okay yeah I do think the flaw with this movie, I do think the mother is a little much. I, oh, for I her didn't being, like her. Yeah, I mean, I I understand that, you know, she's got this arc and this protection of her feeling for the land and doesn't want the wind turbines in there. But for her to be just so rude to this woman who's done nothing wrong except for like rent out the uh, cottage yeah, that they she's have. A cut- yeah she was so rude to a customer (laughs) she's really rude and kind of rude to her son at points she just apologized for that but she was just a little much she was too much she was going through some stuff I thought that she was too much as well yeah and I was like she needs to calm down and like the not the great way to tell people to you know get them to calm down is not to tell them to calm down but that's what I I wanted to do I wanted to be like you need to chill out she's a customer she has nothing to do with anything yeah it was (laughs) and then I thought she had a real attitude her attitude was really interesting considering that Joss's family used to own this farm. It's not like she owned that land her entire life and it's been in her family for generations. It was bought by, you right, know, she bought true. it from Joss's family. And I'm like, what's your deal? Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. And also, (laughs) if she doesn't want them selling the land, getting the turbines, renting out the cottage, why doesn't she get a job? Yeah. (laughs) Why doesn't she pay? You know, I don't even really, I I guess she was just working on the farm or what was she doing? I hanging out with sheep I don't know I don't know they seem to need help with that school why does she work there like yeah well and also when she was uh you know watching Tegan or whatever it still felt like they didn't she wasn't doing a very good job of being like hey something's going on with my granddaughter let me see if I can help her yeah well and so she's yeah she's just very sarcastic and she's like forgive me if I don't want the rest of the farm looking like an Orville novel (laughs) I was like jeez (laughs) 
But this little girl made up for the grumpy mom because she is absolutely adorable. She was so adorable. I was like, I could watch Tegan all day long, you know, drawing her little stories and mm-hmm. poems and stuff. I was oh. like, get it, girl. And when she's like, I find writing tricky too sometimes. Oh, it was mm-hmm. so cute. And I mean, I related, I mean, I really, because I had, I have a little bit of dyslexia, not like yeah. huge, but enough that certain things were kind of hard for me. Uh, and particularly driving, like getting, learning to drive was a challenge for wow. me uh, with the dyslexia. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's good that, she happened to uh, notice and, you know, kind of help the um, father, Daniel, help him to kind of realize uh, so that she could be ready for this poetry reading. Yeah. Well, and I did, I did question like, so just because you have an adjunct instructor position in romantic literature, doesn't mean you can determine when people are dyslexic, but <laughs> I was like, okay, I think there's a whole bunch of people who probably diagnose that, that have, would, would like a word. <laughs> yeah, probably that's fair. I, I think that she had some experience just with herself, didn't she? Her, her mom was dyslexic. Her mom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was more like even more than her like education background it was more her personal background yeah. that kind but of that's what I, but I was like mm, I don't know about that but, but yeah you probably okay. want to go to a professional at a certain point <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, although it is it's it, dyslexia is different than like autism in yeah in, in the sense that like uh I mean I don't I shouldn't be saying because what do I I yeah, I, I don't feel know like about it. <laughs> I feel like it's uh it's just not as all consuming as autism can be yeah. as far as their life. It's more of that specific learning. Yeah, um, it's a I learning mean, in the spectrum on autism goes all different ways. So I but uh but it's more just about specific learning styles with dyslexia, mm-hmm. in my experience at least. Um, and, uh, so I never, I never had it officially diagnosed or anything like that. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know, everyone's experience is different, but, uh, but it was good that she noticed. And then, yeah, that she happened to know things about like the, the writing, the circular writing in circles, you know, and using the pictures and, you know, some of the mind mapping, mind mapping, mapping. yeah. That was yes. lucky that she happened to know all that. <laughs> yeah. And which I'm like, how did she learn that? Because I don't think understanding romantic literature <laughs> is the same thing as, yeah. I mean, mind mapping, I imagine is just like brainstorming, I would assume. <laughs> um, it's just like, like visualizing the, the yeah, story. Kind so of. she doesn't have to like focus on the actual yeah. spelling of the words. So he is uh, building this wall that is uh, out out by the edge of his land. And she she comes by there and she says, well, can I help you build the wall? And he says, uh, and she says, I'd rather build a wall than bang my head against one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you have completed your doctorate. Yes. Um, so what was that experience like writing your... Um, your doctorate. Yeah. So I had to do comprehensive exams and then write a dissertation. Dissertation. That's the word I was looking for. And it was a lot. (laughs) Um, Although I do think the process of tenure, which she was trying to go for a tenure track position, which is deals with like job security, essentially, Mm -hmm. um, I thought was way harder than doing my dissertation and my comprehensive exams. But I had like a semester where I taught one class and all I did was study for comprehensive exams. And one of the questions I had answered four questions, three were in person on a computer in like a conference room in my department. And then the last one was a paper that was meant to be a proposal for my dissertation. And my dissertation was hard. And I had very much a mentor who was like, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. You need to figure it out. So I did spend a couple 
days crying in the library. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was hard, but tenure where you're publishing and you're um, have high teaching scores and you do service and all that. And then you're voted on by like your peers, essentially, if they think that you meet what the bylaws say in terms of what should be awarded tenure. And so I was more scared about getting tenure than I was about passing my dissertation. So mm, that's what yeah. I say when there's a little PTSD, because Joss <laughs> had, although I think they would be a little bit more involved in getting a tenure track position than writing a paper, but um, she had two weeks to resubmit a paper um, to be considered for this tenure track position. And so mm -hmm. that's what she was saying, like beating her head against the wall. She was stuck. She was in a rut. And that is very much something that happens <laughs> with the dissertation, with the research, but you're at the mercy of like publishing, right? Like I would yeah. get, it took like six years to get one paper accepted by a journal and I still have, and it was available online. And I, and I talked about it with my friend on my friendship podcast. And we had more listeners on the Friendship Podcast than we did readers of the article. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, it, so would they give something. like two weeks like this to, no, or is it just it, one and done? Well, it's basically like you are working, as soon as I became a professor, I was working towards getting tenure. So it takes, it usually you have to go up within seven years. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, what she was doing is more like an application process. She's, you know, like that's essentially what it is. She's in an adjunct position, which they don't pay enough and don't get enough benefits. And it's a terrible system, but that's for a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she was trying to get a tenure track position. So technically what she would be doing is applying for a job. Um, whereas once you're a professor and you're trying to get tenure, you are working to publish research consistently, you're continuously uh, getting a high teaching scores in your classes from students and you're involved in service. So um, so I, even though there were a couple of things where I was like, well, maybe not technically, you know, suspension of belief, disbelief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought they did a pretty good job of showing the like pressure and the stress and I yes. think she did a very good job of like showing the anxiety and yeah. her anxiety attacks. And I mean, that's where this gets into the more of the, uh, the movies and mysteries channel, the more dramatic is, is, yeah. uh, as opposed to other ones where people, where people die. This one yeah. is more about the <laughs> mental health. And, yeah. and, and I've had, uh, I've had a couple panic attacks in my life and I have dealt with anxiety and I think she portrayed it really well. The, the kind of spinning feel yeah. when things start to feel kind of out of control and how you feel like yeah. you can't breathe. Uh, all of that, I thought was very well done. Well, I thought it was interesting. Um, and maybe it's just my limited view of movies from Hallmark, but to focus on mental health, I was like, wow, that's yeah, really interesting. And then I, I sort of laughed at the mental health movie was the one that was about professors <laughs> yeah. and then I was like this is just my personal opinion like you know there's some aspects of academia that are a little toxic and you know if you're having panic attacks maybe this is not the job for you you know what I mean like maybe it's too like maybe the you know academia puts too much pressure on mm -hmm. people you know I'm not saying that she is not capable of doing her job because she seemed really well informed on uh, the particular poet that she studied and mm -hmm. she seemed to be an academic in that sense. Um, so I very well think that she can do her work. It's just that the pressures of the job specifically and it's like you're either in or you're out, you know, um, is I, I just was like, yeah, yeah I mean, maybe it's time to step away from this job. It's not good for your health. Well, no, I think that's what she kind of realizes by the end. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's also kind of this gift from her mother, the fact that her mother had reserved this place uh, the year before and uh, that her mother, you know, knew that she would need this 
is, mm-hmm. is very sweet. And, uh, and I, I think that she kind of realizes that, uh, she it just doesn't have her heart in to this career yeah. that she thought yeah. she was kind of going on automatic and uh, academics will do that to you yeah i'm, I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> and, uh yes and then we have him saying that he needs a wingman and that was really cute i thought especially because they come back to it at the end well the thing is like he i don't think she said, can I, should I be your wingman? And he didn't know what it was. So it was even cuter when he brought it back later. Because, yeah. I could use the company. Know. I'm feeling a bit unmoored at the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when she has the anxiety attack. And uh, it all comes from when she or started when she was a kid, she was in a car accident with her dad. Her dad died and uh, she Adding, has had anxiety attacks ever mm-hmm. you know since then we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the heart's choice by tracy peterson and kimberly woodhouse we have the perfect book for fans of pbs's miss scarlet and the duke and for readers who like a hint of mystery mixed in with their historical romance in the heart's choice best-selling authors tracy peterson and kimberly woodhouse introduce a female court reporter in montana during a murder trial she's convinced that the defendant is innocent but no one except the handsome new carnegie librarian Mark Andrews will listen to her. In a race against time, will they be able to find the evidence they need and open their hearts to love before it's too late? Purchase The Heart's Choice for 30% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. Two deaths in this movie, but they happen before the movie yeah. started. <laughs> She's basically an orphan at this point. Yeah. And, mm. uh, and um, it's been a year since her mom has yeah. passed. And so it was... Her mom, her 35th, is it her 35th birthday who's coming up? And so that's why the trip was planned. Uh, her mm-hmm. mom planned the entire trip um, to yeah. take place when she turned 35, which I but, thought that is some planning. Yeah, but I loved the uh, the the little trips they took to the to the town are so mm-hmm. cute. Like they go to that uh, puppet show. Yeah, it was so cute. <laughs> And, uh, and then they go and get pasties and beer. <laughs> it's really cute. And, and keep going to the literary festival, which is on yeah. for what seemed to be <laughs> yeah. two weeks. The book stand, and they go to that book stand. And mm-hmm. he says, she says, if you're calling me a nerd, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what you read when you don't have, have to determines who you will be when you can't help it. That's a pretty mm-hmm. good line, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do I, 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 the problem I have now is that pretty much almost everything I read, I have to read for the podcast. Yeah. We have mostly book sponsors. So I'm yeah. usually reading something that has to do. So, but well, they are the kind the of same. books that I would typically read. Uh, so, I mean, I did just read the latest Emily Henry uh, book, mm-hmm. Happy Place, Happy Places. It was really cute. I enjoyed it. It was a little stressful. <laughs> Cause I'm just I, like, these two people, get to, what are you doing? <laughs> see, I'm more likely to watch TV than I am to read. So I don't know what that says. That probably says a lot about me, but <laughs> I'm also the same that, um, well, my podcast is on hiatus now, but I do read books about friendship and talk about them on the friendship podcast. Um, and so, but I want to read more this summer. And so I haven't picked out a book to start. I should probably do that today. Yeah. Summer starts tomorrow. <laughs> well, we've had some really good ones. I'll send you some links and stuff that have been sponsoring yeah, perfect. the pod. Some really but, good ones. But like thinking like what you read for pleasure, like what that says about you. Like yeah. a lot of times I'm trying to read something to help me get out of a rut or get me into <laughs> reading. And it's usually like... Nancy Drew is from when I was like 12. <laughs> I think I probably read would if I had just unlimited time, I'd probably read Jane Austen. Wow. I, I used to read all six of her main novels every yeah. year. That was a thing. Every year. Every year. I used to do it every year. And I actually did it last year, which I was really happy about. 
Yeah. Um, a lot of it is listening because I am a little dyslexic. So I yeah. like to listen more so than I like to. Are you, are you going to do it again this year? I don't know because I'm having to read all these books for sponsorships. Well, so I don't think I'll have time to read them all, but I at least would like to read Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Because I love that book so much. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, uh, it's an interesting thought. I mean, it was de- it would definitely be some kind of light, fun romance. Last year, I read all of the um, Bridgerton books. So that was really mm. fun. See, for me, I'm more of a mystery thriller, psychological. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> crime sort of person, which doesn't, I mean, that tracks if people remember those that are listening <laughs> yeah. that I grew up on Lifetime. In fact, my mom called me and she's like, there's there's a prom movie on lifetime i was like say no more (laughs) because that's my kind of jam where it's like dying for a crown i was like oh i need to watch this (laughs) there you go uh i but i did like the way that they weave poetry into the script uh this is written by nicole baxter and i think it's a very well done script that just adds to kind of the romance and to just the authenticity uh, it adds to the character of the of the whole piece, I think, is having these like Wordsworth, I wandered lonely as cloud, like actual poems, yeah. the solitary reaper is the one they start out with. Uh, then they have the presence of love, which is the title of the of the film by Samuel Coleridge, uh, a bunch of different poems. And I just think that added a lot to the story. See, I think that could have easily gone south. Like as yeah, soon yeah, as yeah. we're just quoting poetry, you're like, I roll. <laughs> well, then when but she I did used... not even once. I was like, okay. Yeah. When she uses Wandered Lonely as a cloud with Tegan to help her understand. Yeah. And that was really lovely. And like I said, I loved the scene when she goes to help him with the teacher, which is so sweet. And I was like, oh, it just made you want these two people to get together. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and and that is, it goes back to the thing where I was like, does he think she's an expert because she's a romantic literature professor? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And, uh, and so the mom says, you always lead with your heart at the expense of everyone else. Imagine how your father would feel if he knew this is what you're going to do with his farm when you took over. And imagine what your mother will feel when she watches her son give his heart away to another woman who is bound to leave. So he's putting up the, Whoop. what do you call them? The windmills? Like, yeah, what the are wind they? turbines. <laughs> yeah, the turbines. And then he's got a crush on Joss. So she's like, you just killed both your dad and me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's rolling over in his grave. Mom's on her way there. I mean, it is a Hallmark murder yeah. mystery. Because <laughs> Tegan's mom left. They, yeah, that's They didn't crazy. want him to get together with her said he was too young but they did it anyway and once she had the baby she was like I'm over this and she left yeah that's wild yeah 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 so I guess I can understand why she would be kind of hesitant especially that you've got this woman who she's from the United States yeah it's from the United States (laughs) what are the Um, odds that she's going to move to Cornwall but then the mom and joss had this moment where she gives the mom gives her this box left by her mom yeah i think it's interesting that like you know there wasn't more at the beginning about you know she mentions to daniel that her mom and dad sold or her grandparents sold the farm to daniel's mom and there wasn't more of a conversation with with yeah. the mom at that time and i don't know if it just it took her a while to realize or she didn't understand like if it was in fact this lady but when they cleaned out the mill where she stays the bed and breakfast that's where she finds the box and realizes that it must be Joss's. and it's a kind of a cool box i was like oh what is yeah. this it's cool and she says Joss says, ever since she died, I feel like something important has gone missing. And then the mom says, loss is a terrible thing. It never completely goes away. And then she says, I miss her so much. Yeah. And they say, she's still with you. Her love lives inside you. I thought that was beautiful. Presence of love. Yeah. (laughs) 
And I mean, I know I've just only lost grandparents, thankfully, and a couple, yeah. cu- couple of my cousins. Uh, but uh, when I, I was just having a, a time the other day where I was thinking about my grandma when I, that's, that had passed in 2019 and how much I miss just spending time with her. And yeah, well, I can't remember. I think it was a show I'd seen or. No, it was, um, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret going to that yeah. movie, which I absolutely loved. Uh, I need and to see that. Oh, it's so good. The grandma character, Kathy Bates plays a grandma in there. And it reminded, she reminded me so much of my grandma and like, gotcha. they have this kind of, uh, like weekend that they spend together. And, uh, I remember just, I just remember such great time spending many with my grandma and, yeah. uh, when, um, when she got, she got sick and then she ended up living another a decade, which was amazing, but yeah. she had like a heart incident. Uh, yeah. and we all kind of rushed. And I remember telling my sister who was there with her in California, I said, you know, let me know, keep me updated. Cause you know, me and grandma have a special relationship. And she was like, every single one of the cousins has called this weekend and said the same thing. <laughs> but it was true it. it really was she, she had a special a, relationship with everyone i love it yeah 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 that you that there i think people like that are such a gift that when you're with them you feel like you are the most important person yeah to that person yeah yeah so anyway um and then we have tegan they go to the festival and she gives tegan the book and she says, there's no wrong way. And, uh, and then he says, thank you so much for helping Tegan. And she says, it's nothing. And he says, we both know it's everything. <laughs> yeah. That was to me so a really important moment because the book of poetry that was in the box that the mom gave her, uh-huh. um, was her mom's like book that her grandma gave her right? and yeah. so she had all these like notes in the margins and things like that and because her mom had dyslexia and Tegan has dyslexia she's like you can understand poetry in a way that I can't like my mom and I thought that was really cool like at first I was like you want to give that away that's probably that's a pretty special poetry book you know uh, for the family but I think it was really nice to give it to Tegan. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Really, really good. Very sweet. And, and just that, like he was gone. I mean, I think pretty much from the minute he saw her, he was gone, but, but especially he was just, she just knew. Seeing, seeing her with Tegan, I think. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Anytime and- there was a, he was what. Walk- he was always working on his laptop, working on those windmill things. Like they always, he always had the pamphlet out and he was always staring out the window at him. <laughs> yeah. And, and like this poem is a pretty tricky poem. Like it's got a lot of hard words in it. Uh, you going to read it. I'm going to read it. Yes, All right. I probably won't do as well as Tegan, but it's you mold my hopes. You fashion me within and to the leading love throb in the heart through all my being, through all my pulses beat. You lie in all my many thoughts like light, like the fair light of dawn or summer's eve on rippling stream or cloud reflecting lake and looking to heaven that bends above you. How oft I blessed the lot that made me love you. Dang. 
<laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, she did so good. I was so proud of Tegan. She was adorable. Is she in a lot of Hallmark movies? No, she's, uh, I, let me see. She's she only, had, this is her only credit on IMDb. What? This movie. Yeah. She was very she good. Was... And it was just so cute the way the grandma's holding up the pictures. So I can't she would... believe this is her only job. I mean, she's probably done other stuff like plays and stuff like that. Yeah, hope, probably. But... I don't know. She's super talented though. And I uh, well, she's it's her birthday it's joss's birthday and so they're like we should celebrate and then he says please stay longer let's celebrate but let's at least celebrate now tonight and she's mm-hmm. like i feel like we already did and he says can i at least take you to the station tomorrow and then she says everything has all been so perfect i'd rather end it like this mm. And he's this, and she's this is this. This sounds 19th century, and not very promising. And then she kisses him, mm-hmm. and he doesn't really kiss back because I think he's just so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it'll like, be okay, Daniel. Away. <laughs> it'll be okay, Daniel. Just find, <laughs> find your hat and your plaid, and you'll be as good as new. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be heartbroken. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and then uh this is you lie in all my thoughts and that her mom is there with her in the in the hills and uh, he says i'm not sure the experience was or she the the mom says i'm not sure the experience was what you wanted it to be and he says it was so much more and then we get the scene between him and his mom and he says uh your tea method is far superior to mine he says, any chance you come around on the turbines? I think we should do it. So then she gives her blessing. Finally. And, yes. <laughs> and he says, I love this place too. So does Tegan. We're doing it for her too, mom. And then she says, forgive me for what I said to you. I've regretted it ever since. You deserve to be loved by someone who cares deeply for you. Mm yeah so she does come around so she didn't like ruin the movie for me it was just (laughs) i just felt like she was just a little too much there's no way she'd be that rude to someone that she's never yeah i feel like you just would just kind of maybe huff off or something i don't think you would be that rude or you would be like at least fake nice like yeah yeah you You know like something like thanks for being here Mm -hmm. and then lay into her son yeah (laughs) And then the, uh, the, he shows up at the train station and, uh, she's like, what are you here? I had to stop <laughs> you from getting on the train I've got two minutes for let me say what I need to say. <laughs> you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you get what you need. Can't English poet. <laughs> always get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, he says don't leave <laughs> use the cottage as a base fill up that passport of yours travel the world so good oh my gosh I died. so is he basically just giving her a place to live for free so she can travel and do stuff amazing I think so i mean <laughs> she could like basically be a mom for tegan and they probably have their own kids and she can travel and <laughs> that's it's great <laughs> um he says you're an expert on romantic literature don't you think it's time for you to do something romantic oh snap yeah got called out i mean and i guess i would because she says i've got all my friends in boston and an apartment and everything and i i guess i would be more concerned if i felt like she was invested in the career at all like i think it's perfectly fine for her to go and and be in ireland with tegan and and daniel and figure out something new or just be a not just be a mom but be a mom if that's what she wants whatever she i just feel like she is not happy in her career so her abandoning it to be with tegan and daniel is fine she needs to read more for pleasure that seemed to be the answer (laughs) well i mean i guess that's how you figure out who you really are 
that's what you read. Yes, exactly. Which is for her is poetry and me is Nancy Drews. <laughs> <laughs> that tracks, I feel like. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It yeah. very much does. Yes. <laughs> Uh, he says, life is a risk. You just have to embrace it, but you'll have the best wingman. So good. And then we get our kiss. And then he says, you sure about this? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, but I could have had a job with security. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've been banging my head against the same rock wall for years. May as well try a new direction and see how that goes for a bit. It, she does because being an adjunct instructor in Boston, Oh my God, she would not be able to afford rent. I'm just going to (laughs) say. Yeah. So you're saying you uh, would be up for the the move to Ireland. (laughs) Yes. I'm on my way to Cornwall now. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And then they go, they have one year later and I, and they show the festival and everything. And she's reading at the festival. And I did think that they were going to show him propose or something like that. Yeah. A year well, later. But you knew it was serious because what was she wearing? She was wearing plaid, which leads <laughs> us to believe that she now lives there because she's now English. She was wearing plaid. She's been I was adopted. on to them. Yes. She's been adopted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, I just think that this is like very well made. I think it's beautiful. Like Ireland never looked better. Yeah, although I don't think they filmed their parts there. Yeah? No. The very first of when they're in the car, that was special effects. So there were yeah. Yeah. special effects that I I do think the movie was filmed in Ireland. Let me check. Well, maybe not this particular scene then. Yeah, it was filmed in Fourth Lethen, Cornwall, England. Oh yeah, it was England, not Ireland. Oops. <laughs> well, they uh, they may have um, some scenes in like studio and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's uh, what it felt like. the The driving scenes were special effects. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like. Yeah. Um, my only problem with this movie was that I mean, besides, I can get over like the differences between tenure and you know that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she came in a blue jacket. The next day she wore a pink jacket. Yeah, she did bring a lot then of Then the next day she had a gray, like, you know, tweed jacket. And then she had like a fourth jacket. I was like, what? How that is that in many? the grand tradition of Hallmark movies. Is but I was like, count the coats. She's an, she has ad, she's an adjunct instructor. Do you know what they make? <laughs> like nothing. She couldn't afford all those coats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe she also, gets them at like, thrift stores. That's true. But also, how did her suitcase fit all those books and these jackets? Yeah. <laughs> I have questions about yeah. that. Other than yeah. that, I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah. I just, I think they had great chemistry. I really loved everything with the daughter. Uh, the mom's the only real like flaw for me. She's just a little yeah. much, but I don't know. I still, I think when we reviewed it for the podcast, I think I gave it a five uh, because it's just super super high quality when you're when I'm like my scores are comparing it to Hallmark movies yeah right I'm gonna and, give it a, a 4.75 for yeah. the four jackets yeah. and his hat yeah <laughs> <laughs> whenever you watch a Lacey's Bear movie that's when you really count the coats oh a Lacey's Bear Christmas movie she has so many coats <laughs> Okay, good to know. Good to know. Something to look out for yeah. in the future. <laughs> yeah. So let us know what you think of this movie. If you've seen it, it is available on Hallmark Movies now. Uh, so check that out. And uh, Elisa, where can people find you? Yeah. So my podcast has been on hiatus, and I am glad to say that it's coming back. So that is Best Forever's Pod or Best Forever is a podcast for kindred spirits. Um, I have lots of episodes now and new episodes in June. And you can find me on all social media at friends with Elisa, A-L-Y-S-A. That is great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast, Homework's Pod, Homework's Podcast, 
all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, which is really fun. Uh, we're having Rodrigo Massa on in May mm. to talk about Merry Texas, which was one of my favorites last year. So that's super cool. And uh, we have another fun one planned for June. So check out the Patreon. I think it's one of the most bang for your buck of any Patreon I've seen. Uh, And then we also have the merch store, which is a lot of fun. So check that out. And thanks so much, Lisa. It's always fun talking friendship with you. Yes. And we'll talk more next time. (laughs) Bye everyone. (laughs)